Sharing works, so that's really good. That gives me uh, the opportunity to uh, welcome you once again to this um, edition of the EQUIT webinar. And uh, we're very happy to see you today to listen to Anton Bespalov. Uh, he's uh, at the Partnership uh, for Assessment and Accreditation of Scientific Practice. And in short, we call that PASP uh, in, the, in our circles. Um, and uh, he's going to present today on the equipped quality system. And we're looking forward to uh, hearing from you, Anton. I think the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Uh, and so good afternoon. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, well, as uh, Kim said, I'm Anton Despal from PASP in Heidelberg. Um, and uh, before I start, I actually need to uh, make the acknowledgements because uh, I will uh, present uh, equipped quality system, but obviously uh, it was not developed by me alone. Uh, I was only part of the team, very large team. And uh, I'm very pleased that both Rene and Kim are here in this uh, webinar because Kim and uh, Rene were uh, um, very essential uh, members of, uh, of the uh, consortium that developed this quality system. So I do want to acknowledge that this is a team effort. So uh, EQUIT stands for Enhancing Quality in Preclinical Data, and it started in 2017 as an uh, uh, IMI-funded uh, uh, collaboration of 29 partners from eight uh, countries uh, in, uh, in Europe and uh, North America. Uh, EQUIT has uh, uh, had a lot of, uh, the project had a, a, a lot of different outputs, and one of which, uh, probably one of the most significant uh, 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 outcomes of, of, the, of the collaboration was uh, novel quality systems that was uh, designed to support all areas of non-regulated uh, uh, drug discovery, non-regulated uh, biomedical research. The project ended in 2021 and uh, uh, non-profits uh, 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 um, uh, foundation that we call briefly co-equipped was founded uh, in 2021 and uh, this is the organization that sets the path for self-sustained future of the quality system. So you may have already noticed on the first slide and here uh, again that I'm using those QR codes in case you want later to follow up some links as they will lead you in this case for instance to a site uh, that is uh, 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 the uh, site of the of the GoEquip Foundation. Uh, so uh, Go uh, GoEquip go or Grandors of Equip is a foundation that is supposed to that is expected to uh, uh, to maintain and first develop quality system, but it's part of the framework that we have uh, designed and are implementing as uh, that's uh, on operational level is supported by. PASP network. So PASP uh, is the operational partner of uh, GoEquip Foundation. Uh, we are present in several countries, uh, um, in the US and in Europe. Uh, and I mentioned that because uh, PASP uh, uh, is a network that includes uh, uh, um, also commercial entities. And I need to make a conflict of interest disclosure. I am a co uh, well, PASP itself is a co founding member of the Equit Consortium, is the operational part of, of this nonprofit uh, foundation, and I am a managing partner and shareholder of, uh, of PASP. So, just to make it very clear that I'm very biased and in the, in the most explicit sense of this word, I'm very biased when I'm talking about uh, Equit and Equit quality system. So, uh, when we present uh, equipped quality system, we always start with explaining why quality system is important. We explain then what equipped quality system is about, and then we end uh, with uh, with the how question. So how it is implemented. Today I will change the sequence of uh, uh, the, 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 the flow of information flow a little bit, and I'll start with the what question. What is the equipped quality system about? Because uh, equipped quality system is quite unique and it's based on uh, on, on five uh, key principles that I would like to introduce up front, so that you uh, appreciate that it is very different from uh, other more formal quality systems that many of us are familiar with, uh, ISO or, or uh, GLP or something else. So first principle is engage with autonomy. So what does it mean? So uh, equipped. Uh, <clears throat> leaves the possibility uh, um, 
for uh, specific uh, needs and specific solutions uh, 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 to be decided uh, by, by researchers. So equip does not prescribe uh, uh, any solutions, it does not uh, uh, dictate what researchers need to attend to, what they do not need to attend. So leaves quite a lot of uh, uh, freedom to engage with autonomy. Example, equip recommends, very strongly recommends to apply randomization to all studies. But we leave up to the researcher to decide whether randomization applies to a particular study or a particular study design, because scientists typically are in a much better position to judge what is relevant for their type of research, what is less relevant for their type of research. Another principle is go, grow through reflection. What does it mean? Uh, we are not working in isolation, so we uh, work, uh, we collaborate, we are funded, we publish, uh, we are part of enough large, larger institutions. So we need to fit in the environment, and the environment also uh, often dictates what is the right quality level, uh, what is the right quality that, that is appropriate uh, uh, for, uh, for what we do. So. Um, uh, using example of randomization, to which I will be coming back uh, over and over again, uh, our uh, peers, our collaborators, our funders or publishers may have certain expectations regarding the use and reporting of randomization. And the quick quality system allows us to reflect, allows us to uh, uh, survey the environment and uh, 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 identify what, uh, what needs to be um, respected and uh, um, 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 what, what needs to be uh, um, um, taken care of. Uh, next principle, focus on goal. So um, using example of, uh, again, randomization, so equipped highlights the importance of randomness, so lack of predictability in the correctly developed randomization sequence but leaves up to the user to select the specific methods. So as long as the outcome, as long as the, uh, uh, um, the sequence that you, uh, as, as, as long as you assign subjects to treatment conditions in a truly random way, it doesn't matter whether you do it with a random number, uh, num tables with random numbers, or whether you use uh, uh, um, one software package or another software package. So how you arrive to that is, uh, is irrelevant. What is important is the outcome, the, uh, the end result that you uh, get to. Equipped also expects that uh, uh, under uh, its quality system, uh, all key research processes will be uh, 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 trans fully transparent. Uh, and uh, um, if you decide, for example, not to apply randomizations, then uh, the decision will, of course, be respected, but the decision must be stated, must be justified, recorded, and uh, in many cases also reported. Uh, key research processes must also be traceable. Uh, if you do apply randomization, then the way you apply it, whether you use uh, Excel or random numbers tables or uh, uh, R uh, software, uh, um, the, the way you apply must be traceable and again, uh, reported. So these are the five key principles. And so I could have stopped here because this is the essence of the quick quality system. And I uh, uh, want to say that whenever we have questions, whether when we uh, advise someone on how to implement quality system, when we initiate assessments of uh, an already established quality system, these are those key principles to which we always refer to. Those are uh, strategic principles, but on operational level, we have what we call 18 core requirements. Three core requirements enable good research practice. Nine core requirements make sure that the quality research practice is established. And then at the very top, you see there are certain core requirements that are essential for proper maintenance of the quality system. I will try to briefly illustrate uh, each of those levels and start with um, enabling uh, uh, core requirements. Um, uh, examples that I've chosen is uh, every research unit must have defined quality objectives uh, in, 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 in simpler words. So we, we when we talk to uh, uh, research groups willing to implement quality system, we always uh, insist that they um, uh, uh, in very plain words, in very plain terms, uh, uh, explain why quality matters for them. 
uh, not because we want to save the world, not we want to, not because we just want to uh, see uh, 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 support the progress of science. No, what does it matter for you personally? What does it matter for uh, for your environment, for your lab? Um, so something that uh, can be easily communicated between peers, uh, uh, communicated to students and uh, uh, and even people outside of, of the lab. So uh, essentially, this is the why question: Why call it a system can be helpful uh, in uh, for 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 given research level? Equip has designed uh, uh, some guidance materials that help to answer this question and. So, uh, if you follow this uh, QR link, uh, you will see a video that was recorded by uh, by Equipped, represents statements made by scientists in different roles in industry and academia, very junior, such as PhD students, as well as uh, professor level, and they give examples on uh, why quality uh, uh, matters for different roles uh, for different uh, uh, careers. I will not focus on those examples which are uh, uh, in, in, in that video. I'll uh, give, give a couple of more examples that are uh, uh, very relevant uh, uh, from my perspective. So we all want to uh, publish, we need to publish, and we also want to make discoveries. That's why probably we want to, to do science. We want to report breakthrough findings, unexpected, unprecedented, groundbreaking, revolutionary. So all the words that you see on this slide represents what we want to report. We want to excite ourselves, we want to excite uh, uh, readers uh, of our research, our peers. And we know that whenever we uh, uh, make a finding that is unprecedented, that is very innovative, really new, unparalleled, we know that there is a particularly high risk that we may have a false, false positive finding. So uh, we know that whenever we go for a highly innovative research, there is a, a very high risk of uh, seeing negative results. What does it mean? It means that if we go for something exciting and our results look positive, we may have a higher uh, barrier to convince our peers that our findings actually are trustworthy, that they should not be easily discarded. We, we do want to convince and communicate that uh, uh, we have confidence in our results and our peers should, uh, they should also have confidence. On the other hand, uh, we, uh, if we go for something very exciting, risky, innovative, we may indeed have negative results, we may fail, and that, that also happens. Hard to believe, but that also happens. What happens with negative results? They end up in, uh, often in the drawer, unpublished, and uh, we don't want to write them up. Why? Because we believe that if results are negative and so they get, are published, then uh, uh, um, they may be, our peers may perceive that uh, uh, we lack competence, uh, we uh, wasted time, resources, and, uh, and so forth. So quality system helps to deal with uh, anticipated feedback from peers and superiors. And in particular, it helps to uh, uh, support confidence in positive data when we generate, and also helps us to support confidence in negative data uh, that uh, occasionally will be generated, especially in highly innovative research. So anticipation is a key word when we think, when I think about the uh, area where quality system is of greatest use. So uh, many of you have heard about ARRIVE uh, uh, guidelines uh, that uh, apply to, uh, uh, the, the, to animal, uh, biomedical animal research. And you may have heard that the most recent revision of ARRIVE guidelines has uh, 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 10 essential items from study design, uh, covering study design, sample size, up, up to uh, uh, experimental procedures and results. So, uh, those are guidelines uh, which are support supposed to uh, they support publication of, of of the research results after research has been conducted. So what uh, I uh, I recently uh, uh, saw I just give you two examples two papers, both published in. Uh, 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 very reasonable journals, one from Elsevier, one from Nature Journal. Both, one paper stated that all annual procedures follow the right guidelines. Second uh, stated that the right gui guidelines were considered. Uh, we, I went through the papers 
uh, and uh, you can say that uh, uh, none of the expectations of the right guidelines were really met in those in those papers. Also, uh, uh, authors did make a reference to a right guidelines. Why do I mention this example? So these are publication guidelines. So what you what we often face is that we have completed research only after that we learn about certain expectations that our peers, our publishers uh, may have, and then it's too late. Then we need to report results. Then we uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, then it's too late to change anything. So quality system is uh, uh, exactly the instrument that allows us to anticipate uh, um, uh, what may be expected uh, later when we, uh, when, when we publish, when we disclose our, our, our results of our research and will avoid uh, problems um, when we have to address the expectations of guidelines such as ARRIVE or in, anything else. So, uh, this is the essence of this second group of core requirements that describe what it takes to establish a good research practice. So we call it that those core requirements support a fit for purpose research rigor. And of course, the question is, how do I know what fits the purpose? So what, what is relevant for my environment? And how, how do I decide? Is there any prescription, is there any guidance on what is relevant for this type of research and what is not relevant for this type of research? What we advise is normally to look at potential consequences of what will happen, what are, what you may lose if you don't follow the, uh, 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 if you don't apply uh, uh, adequate rigor. So, uh, and uh, I will just give you also a few examples. For example, uh, you may be uh, a PhD student uh, or a postdoc, uh, but you have in mind that one day you will uh, turn your exciting findings into, uh, uh, into a startup and uh, will develop a new uh, therapy for, for um, for some unmet medical uh, uh, need. So uh, you will know that uh, the findings that you generate today may be under some scrutiny tomorrow. So someone may, may go back and retrospectively look into what you have done uh, four, five, six years ago. And if there will be some inconsistencies found in your work, it may backfire as it uh, 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 happens in case of this uh, a high profile uh, a company that's uh, uh, lost a lot of um, market value once inconsistencies were found in the uh, doctoral work of the uh, CEO, who, by the way, had to leave the company and uh, 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 her career was uh, uh, significantly uh, affected. Uh, we also uh, want to uh, uh, avoid situations where uh, we uh, do uh, conduct some exciting research today. But uh, after we or other members of our uh, team le leave the, the group, uh, we are no longer able to identify the location of the data. We are no longer able to uh, um, identify the conditions under which the orig original essays were uh, uh, conducted. Uh, and uh, that may have impact on, on the, uh, uh, on the, even on the um, uh, intellectual properties that we uh, uh, support by uh, our own uh, by our own, our own data. So the papers that I cite here on the right side is a very interesting uh, explanation why uh, uh, um, technical, reproduci uh, technical reproducibility, ability to uh, 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 ability to uh, re reconstruct the experiments as they were conducted, is the basis of one of the most fundamental doctrines of uh, of the modern uh, patent law. Uh, another uh, uh, potential impact of uh, lack of rigor, uh, where again, a quality system can be very instrumental in preventing such damaging, uh, 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 such damages, is uh, when we, um, uh, uh, again, our research becomes a subject of uh, uh, investigation and uh, um, it may have an impact on uh, also on our personal reputation. So this is a case that was, uh, um, in, yeah, was quite quite so well uh, known and uh, broadly discussed here in Germany several years ago, when uh, uh, 
uh, director of a research institute was found guilty of uh, research misconduct. Uh, if you look at exactly what happens there, there was no uh, real uh, fraud or um, data, explicit data manipulation. Uh, those were um, just quote unquote, uh, um, very modest deviations of uh, recommended practices, such as uh, they, they were not really traceable to original uh, laboratory notebooks. There were some uh, uh, um, uh, some inappropriate uh, uh, um, uh, manipulations with uh, with images that were published and so forth. The, the end result is that the papers were retracted or uh, um, um, they had to publish a wrapper. But most important uh, is that, uh, uh, and this, this is what was the public perception. So uh, conclusion was that um, a certain number of uh, uh, animal subjects in those studies were wasted. Of course, this is a very painful uh, 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 impact, not only for the reputation of the scientists, but also a very painful in the current uh, environment where we are talking about uh, uh, phasing out animal research in Europe. We as scientists need to demonstrate that uh, we are doing everything possible to uh, maintain highest possible quality standards, uh, at least in animal research. And um, not only animal welfare, but also well being of human subjects uh, can be affected by lack of rigor. Uh, if we are engaged in uh, drug discovery research, for example, uh, we know that um, drug development, uh, uh, successful drug development, is based on, uh, uh, on both uh, uh, assessments of safety and efficacy. And we also know that uh, uh, safety risks can never be fully excluded. Uh, uh, that's why no matter how rigorously we uh, subject uh, new drugs to uh, assessment of uh, uh, safety assessments. And uh, usually we say that the best way to avoid safety risks is to uh, not to advance drugs uh, with insufficient evidence of efficacy into uh, human clinical trials. So uh, those are types of risks that arise if uh, our research does not uh, have uh, uh, sufficient uh, sufficient rigor, and so how much is needed, uh, is we decide on uh, in, in, each, in each case based on our um, on the objectives of our research and not based on the uh, uh, based on the objectives of our research. Uh, um, <clears throat> so uh, in in some fields, uh, in particular in the field of uh, preclinical safety, there are of course a lot of different regulations as that's uh, described uh, um, in details of what needs to be done, how it needs to be done. And so very often we are uh, in research exposed to uh, um, large, large numbers of uh, guidelines, regulations, instructions. And so what I like to say is that uh, the essence of the quality system is not uh, uh, um, uh, describe so, so uh, uh, if we um, have a lot of uh, standard operating procedures, so if we have a lot of uh, formal processes in, in the lab, then st it's still not um, a quality system. So to turn uh, uh, um, um, to, to turn those uh, processes and procedures into a quality system, what we need is uh, is we uh, we need to have um, um, uh, uh, what we call a continuous, impro uh, continuous improvements uh, mechanisms. And those are addressed by the final six core requirements that are addressed uh, uh, on the way to establish a, a quality system. So uh, what are those continuous improvements processes? Uh, we, you may, we may look at it as just a simple uh, um, uh, feed feedback loop. Uh, so uh, let's say a quick quality system expects that uh, um, as the team conducts uh, on a regular basis spot checks to see how uh, different uh, processes uh, function. For example, uh, we may look uh, into the records of uh, incidents and errors that uh, are supposed to uh, happen in every lab. And let's say we do spot checks and reveal uh, no records of any incidents or errors for the past uh, year or two years in the lab. So what does it mean? It means that uh, something is wrong. So for some reason, uh, 
uh, we uh, our team members are not willing to uh, record, are not willing to report uh, incidents and errors. So perhaps uh, there is a need for additional training. There is, there is a need for changes in the reward and cognition system so that uh, those incidents and reported uh, and errors are properly uh, handled. And if we do so, then we will we expect that indeed uh, um, uh, uh, there will be some incidents and errors reported, and so they will trigger uh, a risk assessment and re risk mitigation efforts, and uh, the, the the system will will function. So those feedback loops uh, will function. So uh, now coming to the question how Eclipse quality system is implemented, I would like to uh, group those 18 core requirements into four clusters, just to indicate that um, uh, on the one hand, of course, 18 core requirements uh, sounds like a large number of uh, expectations. On the other hand, many of those can be uh, handled uh, uh, relatively easily. For example, for instance, one group uh, uh, of core requirements can be addressed fast and easy uh, without any external help with limited or no dedicated documentation. For instance, uh, one of the core requirements states research unit must have a procedure to act upon concerns of potential misconduct. Uh, in most countries in, in North America and in Europe, it is expected that uh, all research institutes, whether commercial or not, have uh, uh, procedures uh, to handle uh, misconduct. So what these core requirements uh, tells us is that uh, we expect that every member of research unit is aware of the procedure and knows how to act in case of uh, potential misconduct. So can be addressed very easily uh, with no um, dedicated documentation. Another group of uh, core requirements, again, can be completed, can be addressed without any external help. But it requires certain decisions to be made. Here, examples that I use is that research units must have defined quality objectives. So we often say that if, uh, and again, I emphasize that we, uh, whenever we start talking to a research group about implementing quality system, we go through those quality objectives. Why does quality matter for you? And if uh, a research unit cannot adequately uh, answer this question, we say, stop it. Don't waste your time. If you don't know why quality matters for you, it's a waste of time. The quality system is not worth it if you don't know why you do it. So it requires a decision, requires typically very short, concise, brief statements. Why quality matters for you? I, I know that quality matters for security of my job, for my future, and so forth. Another group of core requirements uh, um, requires some effort. Normally, most elements are in place, uh, but still may require some effort. So example is that I want to use is generation handling and changes to data records must be documented. So uh, uh, in many institutions today, uh, there are already electronic lab notebooks in place. And if you have electronic lab notebooks in place, then uh, such a core requirement would be relatively easy uh, to handle because um, uh, uh, um, electronic lab notebooks allow uh, to, uh, to, to, to process and maintain data records uh, uh, in probably in the best possible way. Uh, but <clears throat> there are also quite a lot of institutions that uh, are a bit behind. And this is why uh, for those institutions, there will be some effort needed here to understand what uh, is meant by data record, what is meant by raw data, and what is the what are the expectations on uh, maintaining data records uh, properly. But uh, still, even for for those institutions that are a bit behind, a lot of elements uh, of data record management are already in place and just need to be organized uh, in, in the way it expects it. Now coming to the last uh, uh, um, group of core requirements, uh, uh, those, uh, uh, again, they do not require much documentation. And we explicitly ask to not focus on documentation. So uh, they require understanding. Uh, 
So we, this is the main focus of our support when we provide uh, uh, guidance and when we work with teams willing to implement quality system, we uh, focus on, on those core requirements. For example, investigator must declare in advance whether a planned study is intended to inform a formal knowledge claim. So in other words, uh, um, investigator must declare in advance whether the study is informed, in, um, uh, exploratory or confirmatory, whether the study is supposed to uh, enable uh, uh, certain decisions. So let me uh, uh, explain what it means. So let's say we have uh, two studies. One study is we have a certain marker, uh, X, uh, and according to our hypothesis, after we apply experimental manipulations, the expression of this marker is supposed to go down. So you see the, the circle becomes smaller. This is our hypothesis. Expression of the marker is supposed to go down. We do the experiment, and indeed our hypothesis is confirmed. The expression of the marker go, went down. Let's say a uh, second situation. Uh, we have a different hypothesis. Expression of the marker is supposed to go up. We do the experiment, but the marker actually went down. So not according to our hypothesis. The outcome of both experiences is the same. Marker went down in study one and the marker went down in experiment two. So are the uh, studies, uh, the studies have identical outcome, but are, is the value of the studies identical? If we just ignore hypothesis in, 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 uh, in study one, or if we just let's say, adjust the hypothesis in study one, will the value of the studies be uh, similar? Of course, the answer is no. And what we uh, normally recommend uh, in this case is in study number two, where uh, outcome uh, contradicts the original hypothesis, the study will, be, uh, will need to be repeated. So this is what this uh, core requirement essentially is about. So 18 core requirements looks like a lot. It looks indeed like a pyramid uh, that we need to climb and eventually are at the tip of the, of the mountain. And uh, that of course, uh, when, when we are at the beginning of our uh, path, we say, well, can we really get so high up? So can we get there? And we say that, yes, we can get there because there are usually more than one uh, route that we can take. Uh, we can start uh, sometimes with, uh, from a higher base camp. And indeed, for most organizations, we see most elements of quality system already in place when they start. It just needs to be assembled uh, to, uh, to get in the right way. If you're well-trained, uh, it's easier to climb. If you work in a good team, if you accept help from others, and equipped usually <laughs> does offer help and advice. And what is also important, equipped suggests that you do it at your own pace. So there is there are no timelines uh, set for implementation of, of, of a quality system. And last but not least, again, I would like to uh, uh, refer to key principles behind equipped quality system. This is one very important instrument that supports uh, us, supports our colleagues in uh, implementing and maintaining a quality system. Those five key principles is my own take home message that uh, I think is uh, the essence of, uh, of what we have developed. And again, uh, to, uh, uh, to put those five uh, principles in one sentence uh, using the randomization as an example, uh, we strongly recommend applying randomization in, in essentially in all experiments, uh, but it's up to a scientist, up to you to decide whether you, you do apply randomization, how you apply it, but the decision as well as all essential details such as methods used must be recorded and must be uh, traceable. Thank you. First of all, thank you, Anton, uh, for this um, great uh, review of the equipped quality system. And uh, as you said, it was quite a ride and it was a shared effort uh, that went over, yeah, uh, four years. And uh, it's still uh, uh, there, so it's uh, it's great um, that it is. So um, you in the beginning you mentioned uh, the the PASP network. So going reaching from the US to UK up to uh, 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 I think Eastern Europe. So uh, what is your uh, impression? Are there different quality cultures in in these different areas? 
how uh, uh, quality or what our arguments are about quality and systems are, are, are received. And where would you see sort of like the best penetration or where is the culture like far advanced and maybe not so good advanced? Or is it all the same everywhere? Uh, today, it's probably all the same um, uh, because we're still in the relatively early phase steps. And uh, um, what we uh, are trying to uh, uh, identify even today, uh, six, six years after we started the equipped efforts, we're still trying to identify what are the areas of research that's, um, uh, will, um, that will benefit most from, from a quality system. Uh, I mentioned today uh, several times uh, annual research, and uh, again, uh, you know that there are discussions about uh, stopping annual research in Europe. Yeah. But our position is that we uh, uh, believe that uh, there is research that in indeed should be discontinued. So low quality, low rigor, uh, biased research, and there is research that is high quality, high rigor, that is essential for our future and that has to be maintained. And the way to distinguish those uh, is probably uh, one of the ways to distinguish those types of research is uh, uh, a quality system or at least certain elements of a quality system that secure high quality output. Hmm. Uh, so probably today, uh, I think Europe is the best place to, to try to implement, to, mm -hmm. to benefit from it, um, but yeah. Okay. Um, so often it is talked about uh, a gap uh, in quality expectation and also in quality execution between academia and, and industry so that sort of industry you find like a higher standard quality standards um so given now the time that that has passed and also initiatives like with scientists.com uh, have emerged uh, uh, would you still see that this gap or this, this expectation gap is still as wide as it was uh, uh, like uh, five six years ago or, or have we come a little farther now in uh, uh, that uh, um, in, in in closing that gap a little bit? Uh, I, I don't know, um, and I don't want to make, <laughs> to make any statements that would be incorrect. What I know is that, of course, uh, uh, even today, uh, industry has a higher uh, uh, has better standards hmm. when it comes to data management. So even though a lot of academic institutions have now implemented electronic lab notebooks, it's not always uh, the case and not everywhere. Uh, so industry is still ahead for that, uh, in that context. But um, uh, when it comes to transparency, uh, I think maybe industry and academia, the, 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 the transparency and traceability of, uh, of data is probably at the same level. So since you just mentioned also also funders, uh, um, so most European funders and also uh, the NIH, DFG, the EU uh, now embrace uh, open science and this openness of of sharing uh, uh, research outcomes uh, such as data and, and protocols and 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 code. Uh, um, do you think this is enough to 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 increase research quality? Um, probably not, um, although it is important, but it's probably that's, that's not that's not enough. Um, um, so it, it depends how broadly we uh, we interpret open science, the term open science, because if we also um, uh, include the uh, traceability of the data. If mm. open science also co covers traceability, then I think it will have a big impact. Because to me, this is one of the biggest issues, uh, traceability of the data. Yeah. Uh, and sh share, if, of course, if you're able to share, uh, it means that you can also trace the data. Hmm. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, 
if it's shared like in the rawest form and but but we all know that that uh, sharing can be also just a, a data dump that is not uh, um, sufficiently mm -hmm. annotated or enriched with metadata so that the the reuse cool. or potentially the understanding is is uh, is uh, very uh, limited well actually I fully agree because it, uh, data being traceable in our in our sense is uh, is being able to reconstruct the experiment yeah so mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah Okay, Elke, Paula, uh, you have any questions? Okay, Paula says, not from we, no thanks. It was an interesting talk. Um, allow me one, one more question because, I mean, you, you showed clearly uh, with the example of the ARRIVE guidelines that putting out guidelines and even publish them in in like how many journals was this like 19 different journals uh publish them and says like we we vouch for them and this is really important to us um that uh, um in in the end uh, um, guidelines are necessary but in terms of like in, introducing like a behavioral change uh, everybody knows sort of like if there are no consequences uh, or enforcements that uh, just a, a fraction of them will, will adhere uh, or others will recognize that, okay, there is no repercussions if I don't do this or I j just say I do uh, uh, what I did and in fact, um, I never did this. So um, now we are at a stage where we have uh, COARA, we have the, the coalition of uh, advancing research assessment. Um, um, so, do you think uh, um, this this could be also an interjection or a place where uh, a quality system could be a, a potential measure in there, and also something that uh, um, we could approach um, academic institutions uh, as this as a as a potential tool. And um, uh, for um, enhancing uh, um, um, research assessment? Yes, I think so. And uh, the reason I mentioned uh, ARRIVE guidelines in this presentation is because um, we, uh, um, you know, you, you completed your study. Now uh, you want to publish it, and you know that nature journals have those uh, checklists for animal experiments. Yeah, and uh, uh, you need to complete those checklists because if you don't, if you say no, you know that you never know what the impact will be. Maybe editors will take uh, a no very seriously, and they'll say, "Yeah, well, it's a low quality research; it cannot be published." I don't know whether it ever happens, but uh, this is how we often perceive. If there are some instructions, we try to follow them. Uh, yeah, and um, so, but if I have not done research according to expectations of those who have put together our guidelines, then it's too late. So I'm forced. Uh, to uh, find a way how to uh, how to meet, meet the expectations of the guideline without uh, um, lying, yeah. Um, and uh, under quality systems, that would not be possible because a quality system would inform you uh, upfront before you. Uh, before you do a study, what, what uh, you may need to consider, so you will have all those things in place. So it will not it's, it, it will not come as, as a surprise uh, at the end mm -hmm. when you when you are ready to publish. So um, uh, um, I think uh, publication guidelines are important, uh, but uh, uh, um, um, action has to be taken. Uh, before studies are planned, or at the mm -hmm. time when studies are planned, um, yeah. So, and we, we see, this is just one example. Uh, and by the way, uh, um, since, since we're in a small group, I can mention that. So mm -hmm. uh, those two papers that I have uh, described on the right slide, uh, they have very mm -hmm. publications from two colleagues. Mm -hmm. 
who are extremely vocal in, in the uh, pro-research discussion in Europe. Yeah. So, um, huh. And uh, what I'm saying is that uh, 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 if uh, any animal rights activists come to those papers uh, and will identify, um, mm -hmm. if it, they will see what we saw, the conclusion yeah. that we make is not that, uh, well, <laughs> it will not be what calls the system. It will just in, uh, reinforce the concerns that a certain part of our society has about uh, animal research. And this is, uh, this is very disturbing. And that's where I see really use uh, uh, for, for quality system. Yeah. Yeah, important point. Thank you. Um, I see uh, uh, Kim has uh, raised her hand. Hi, yes, I, I uh, was thinking about Anton's comment that um, reporting guidelines come too late and may even incentivize uh, putting the wrong information into your paper, which is um, an undesirable byproduct of the fact that we now reject papers if they're, for instance, not randomized or not blinded, while we could also publish them and then take this evidence at the value that we think it still has in spite of methodological shortcomings. The, uh, guidelines like ARRIVE are meant to introduce transparency so that you write down exactly what you did is already a step up from being vague about, about it. But right now, indeed, the consequence could be your paper is not published. And because the value system in science is still so much based on how many publications you have, that is uh, um, something that uh, authors cannot risk. So it becomes harder to, to complete the ARRIVE guidelines if you find that you have not maybe do, done something optimally. That resonates with me because I think we change the way we value scientists, not on the number of publications, but on their transparency, uh, sharing of data, et cetera, and their intention to do it better. And the next time indeed not start with the publication, but with the study design that would maybe be a better incentive to actually report everything that we should take into account when we read about your data. And you know, uh, what's also is um, important is uh, whether it's a formal quality system or not, it uh, brings your attention uh, uh, to, to certain uh, important, uh, to certain uh, terms, and certain methods, for example, blinding, uh, you know, we, um, and we see sometimes that uh, people report that they did studies blinded because it's expected that they blinded certain things. But what they have in mind is that, yeah, look, when I did a study, I had 40 mice and I didn't remember which mice belonged to which group. And they would, some people call it blinded testing. Yes, they're the same for randomization by picking mice from a box one by one. Exactly, because I, I, I didn't know which group because it's, yeah, impossible to remember. Yes. <laughs> so, um, if 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 you uh, if you are exposed to expectations of a quality system, then you would uh, be also exposed to you will learn better what what proper blinding is, and you will mm -hmm. be forced to describe it uh, maybe on paper, and you will need to, may need to go even through training uh, on how to how to apply it. Yeah, that would be an excellent um, like a. Uh, an effect of the quality system that's not in the quality system, but will just happen by itself. It, the main role of quality system is to trigger a change. Mm -hmm. uh, it does not impose a change. It's, it just triggers a change and, and puts you on the right track for continuous improvement. Well, I think those are uh, very good uh, last words, uh, maybe, if yes. there are no further questions. Well, it's very good to see you. Yes, you too. Um, for our two uh, um, participants who are still here, I'm just going to point out uh, that uh, next week already, because uh, this um, webinar was shifted the week, next week we'll have the next and the last equipped webinar where uh, Martin Kass will be speaking uh, with his experiences, about his experiences with the equipped quality system in his academic lab. And uh, so maybe we'll uh, see you there again. Uh, thanks again, Anton. Thank and uh, yes, I, I hope to see you again soon. And um, yes, I wish you all a very nice evening. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.
Thank you. Bye. Bye.